everyone and thanks for watching edupedia world videos we've seen two types of solutions to the time independent schrodinger equation so far we saw solutions that were labeled by a discrete index n in the case of the infinite square well and the harmonic oscillator and they were labeled by a continuous index k for the case of the free particle so let's see what the difference between two are and we see that they correspond to different types of solutions so in the first case you have solutions which are normalizable and they are labeled by a discrete index n examples of these would be the infinite square well and the harmonic oscillator. If you remember in these two cases, we found a ground state and then we found the other energy states and each of them was labeled by an index n and they were discrete, they weren't continuous and that's why to create the final solution we had to take a sum over n. So we take many different states with different indexes n, the energy was dependent on n, the wave function was dependent on n, and we sum them over n to create a linear combination of these solutions, and that's how we got the final general solution. In the second case, we saw for a free particle, solutions were not normalizable, and also they were labeled by a continuous index k. So for example, we had an integral over phi of k. The one example we saw for this was the free particle. And in this case, the linear combination was not a sum over the discrete index n as was the case for the infinite square well or the harmonic oscillator, but the sum of the linear combination was basically an integral over k. So what happens is these are two different types of solutions, they had different structures, they had different properties and they arose from two different problems and they are labeled as bound states or bound solution and the other one this is called scattering states or scattering solutions. So now we try to differentiate between the two and we'll see that some problems will have bound states as solutions, some problems will have scattering states as solutions and other problems will have both these states as solutions. So they will give bound states as well as scattering states in different cases depending on what the energy is. But before we turn to the quantum mechanical case, let's look at the classical mechanical case because bound states and scattering states also occur in classical mechanics. So let's look at first the bound states in classical mechanics. Say you have a particle within a potential which goes something like this. So at minus infinity and infinity, the potential goes to infinity, but in the middle it's some depression. And let's say you have a particle at this point with a certain energy E. So what will happen is the particle will go down, come back up and reach this point and then go back down and it will continue to oscillate to and fro between these two points because this is the energy of the particle and the energy at this point will be equal to the total potential energy and so the kinetic energy will be zero. That means it can't move any more upwards. As it comes down, the potential energy V of X as a function of X decreases so the kinetic energy increases. At the lowest point, the potential energy will be minimum, the kinetic energy will be maximum, and as it goes back up, the potential energy increases and the kinetic energy decreases. But this particle is bound between these two points. 
If you have a certain energy E and leave it at this point, it will move to and fro between these two points, but it will never escape to infinity or minus infinity. Now, of course, this depends on the energy E. If you give it a larger energy, let's say E dash over here, then obviously it would bounce back and forth between these two points, but it still would not escape. And in this case, the reason for that is as x goes to infinity or minus infinity, vx goes to infinity. So no matter what the energy is, there will come a time with that all that energy will be potential energy and kinetic energy will be zero. So this is an example of a bound state. Then you have in classical mechanics, scattering states. Where particles can actually escape to infinity. So let's say you have a potential which goes to zero as x goes to infinity or minus infinity and is something like this. And you give the particle an energy E which is greater than the maximum value of potential energy. Then if you start the particle from this point on the left end, initially it will have some kinetic energy. At this point, the potential energy will be maximum but still it has some energy left over, kinetic energy. So it will go beyond this hill and go off to infinity. So whenever a particle can go off to infinity or minus infinity, it is not bound between any two points and the states are called scattering states. Another example in classical mechanics of scattering states would be when the potential goes to infinity on one side but not on another side. So let's say this is a potential which goes to infinity and we give the particle a certain energy E. And let's say it starts from this point. So when it goes to this point, the potential energy here is a local maximum, but still there is some kinetic energy left over. So it will go beyond this hill, go here. But once it reaches this point, all the energy will be converted to potential energy. The kinetic energy will be zero and it will stop at this point. Then it will come back down go over this hill again because it still has sufficient energy and escape to minus infinity. So in both these cases, the particle can escape to infinity or minus infinity. It is not bound between two points and therefore these are called scattering states. This point would be called the classical turning point. And up till now, the bound and scattering states are pretty much similar for quantum mechanics. When you have the potential that goes to infinity on both sides, then you have a state with particle which is bound between two points called a bound state. When either on one side or on both sides, the potential goes to zero as x goes to infinity and the energy is greater, we have a scattering state. Right. Now, there's a third case which is the most complicated and that is something which is a classical bound state but a quantum mechanical scattering state. So the bound states which we've seen up till now, ones in which the potential went to infinity on both sides. And even in quantum mechanics, we cannot go over an infinite potential. However, we can actually take some energy for some time which makes our energy greater than the original value and we can do what is called tunneling over potential hills. So let's take an example where the potential goes to zero at one side but goes to infinity on the other side. Now if we give an energy E which was here, then it would be a scattering state even in classical mechanics because a particle would go from here, pass over this hill, go to this point where the kinetic energy would become zero as all the energy would be potential energy, go back and it would be a scattering state. But what happens if the energy we give is smaller than this potential hill here and the particle is left at this point? Then according to classical mechanics, 
particle will move to and fro between these two points and it will be a bound state. However, in quantum mechanics, we can absorb a small amount of energy for a small amount of time to tunnel over barriers. So in quantum mechanics, it would be bound between these two, but occasionally it would absorb a little bit more energy and where it comes from is the answer between energy and time. We'll see that in a later video, but it will absorb some energy and occasionally it will tunnel through this side and come out. It cannot tunnel through the other side because only a limited small amount of energy can be borrowed. You cannot take enough energy to escape the infinite potential. So the first case we saw the classical bound state was quantum mechanically bound as well because on both the left and right side the potential went to infinity. But in this case in the left side the potential does not go to infinity and so this amount of deficit at this point the kinetic energy is zero and the energy with the total energy but it can absorb some energy and go with this hump and escape to the scattering state. This concept is called tunneling where even when you have a potential barrier that is higher than your total energy, you can tunnel through it in quantum mechanics. Keep in mind in classical mechanics, this would be a completely bound state between these two points. So this is the first case where we see a difference between bound states and scattering states for classical or quantum mechanics. Now these two bound states and scattering states in quantum mechanics correspond to the two different types of solutions. So for example, when you had the infinite square well or the harmonic oscillator, the potential went to infinity at both points and so you had a bound state between two points, right? You had a bound state between these two sides. However, if the potential did not go to infinity, then you would actually have both bound state solutions and scattering state solutions where it could actually tunnel through a barrier. So for example, in this case, if it was not an infinite harmonic oscillator, but a harmonic oscillator like this, then even if you give it this amount of energy, classically it would stay between these two points, but quantum mechanically it could tunnel through this barrier and some people show tunneling like this because ultimately the energy stays the same but it could tunnel through this barrier and go off the other side. This was the case when we saw a free particle. In the free particle the potential was basically zero everywhere which meant it was zero at minus infinity and infinity and therefore we saw a scattering state. So for classical mechanics we see what the rule is for bound and uh, scattering states. For bound states the energy has to be smaller than the two endpoints of potential energies. For scattering states, even if at one side the potential at infinity is smaller and you don't need to go over a hump, it would be a scattering state. However, for quantum mechanics, the definition is slightly different. If the energy of the particle, and again, because we can absorb finite amounts of energy, we can borrow finite amounts of energy from space, if all that matters is the potential at infinity. So if the energy of the particle is less than v at minus infinity and v at infinity then it is a bound state because it will stay bound between two points it will never be able to go to infinity or minus infinity because it needs to absorb a large amount of energy and again infinity is the important point in classical mechanics it would be just two points because you could not have tunneling if the energy is greater than either V of minus infinity or V of infinity, then it is a scattering state. So the first quantum mechanical case, we saw something like this and this was a bound state because whatever the energy is, it is smaller than both V at minus infinity and V at infinity. When we saw a case like this, which involved tunneling, the energy might be smaller than these two ends, but it is greater than the potential at minus infinity. So when we send an object with this energy, it will go, come back and it might tunnel and come down. Now these both are artificial potentials where the energy at the potential at infinity is non-zero, but in real life cases, potential at plus minus infinity does go to zero. This usually happens. So for these real life cases, we actually have a much simpler rule. If the energy is less than zero, it is a bound state. And if the energy is greater than zero, 
it is a scattering state. Keep in mind, these two are the actual rules. This rule is only followed when v at infinity minus infinity goes to zero, but this was not true for either the infinite square well or the harmonic oscillator. So those were artificial potentials which do not exist in real life. In real life, the potential will go to zero as x goes to infinity or minus infinity. And in that case, if the total energy is less than zero, we have a bound state. If the total energy is greater than zero, we have a scattering state. So we've seen the infinite square well harmonic oscillator and the free particle till now. Now what we'll see in the next video is a delta function potential. And it would look something like this. At x is equal to zero, it would be a big value and then non-zero value after that. And in this case, we'll see that it admits both bound states as solutions and scattering states as solutions because the energy, if it's greater than zero, will still be greater than the energy at plus and minus infinity, which is zero. So now we'll see the first problem in which we have to solve the problem twice. One, by assuming the energy is less than zero and it's a bound state. Once again, after that, by assuming the energy is greater than zero and it's a scattering state. Thank you.